It is so strange to me that when I have to speak English, I have to say this Italian word, which really sounds nothing like an English word. I mean, it has a double Z and it ends in a vowel. Why would people who speak English even use this word? On a daily basis, and while speaking English, I am sure that you use at least one of these 20 Italian words I'm going to talk about in this video. These words are words that are very common in Italian, so when I hear an American or a British person using them, I'm really surprised. And I start thinking, why did you just speak Italian? Confetti in English are small pieces of paper you might throw during a wedding or a birthday celebration. And when I first heard this, I was surprised because in Italy, guess what? We eat confetti. The word, in fact, has a totally different meaning. In Italy, confetti are normally almonds nicely wrapped in chocolate. And we use them for weddings or birthday celebrations or as a gift during graduation. It is an entirely different object, which is also quite heavy to throw. We do throw small bits of paper or even rice at weddings, but we call this coriandoli and never confetti. Graffiti in English and in Italian mean the same thing. While modern graffiti culture comes from the US, especially in cities such as Philadelphia or New York, there is evidence that Romans already used graffiti. For example, in Pompeii, where they used to draw or write on the walls things such as jokes or political opinions and even ads for sex workers, which are still visible nowadays. This is probably why the English word came from Italian. Ghetto is a word I used to see a lot in English movies or documentaries and I never really understood why you use an Italian word until I looked into its history. The word ghetto in English is used to describe an area of the city in which usually a minority lives. And in Italian, ghetto has the very same meaning. The reason why the Italian word is used in English is because the very first use of the word is found in Venice, in the northern part of Italy. There, the Jewish community used to live in what is now known as a ghetto. However, in 1797, Napoleon came and conquered Venice and allowed Jewish people to live wherever they wanted. From this moment, the Venetian ghetto came to an end, but the word is still used nowadays, both in Italian and English. Mafia is used nowadays to describe the many criminal organizations all around the world, both for example in America or in Japan. However, the word comes from Italy, because we use it, it first to describe the Sicilian Mafia. This Mafia then from Sicily spread to America, where it became well known through movies such as The Godfather. So, this word became popular all over the globe. This word is really funny, because in English can have both a positive or a negative connotation. You can call a celebrity a diva in a good way, but it can also refer to a person behaving over the top, with whom it's a little bit difficult to deal with. In America or in the UK, you might say, oh my god, she's such a diva. In Italian, however, a diva is almost always a good way to describe a woman, and especially a celebrity. It is used in areas such as cinema, or music, or even opera. For example, in Italian we would say Marilyn Monroe è una diva del cinema, which in English means Marilyn Monroe is a diva of the cinema. The word tarantula in English and tarantula in Italian is very close to my heart. 
because I'm from South Italy and in South Italy we have a dance called Tarantelle which according to folk stories happens because someone is bit by a spider which is called Tarantula. I will explain, stay with me. The Italian word comes from the Italian city of Taranto which is where tarantulas were very common in the past and the dance was really widespread. I know it can sound super strange, but here is a video of me dancing this dance, Tarantelle. In both languages we use this word to describe the really scary spider. For a normal spider we use in Italian the word ragno. This completely blew me away. It is so strange to me that when I have to speak English, I have to say this Italian word, which really sounds nothing like an English word. Paparazzi in English and paparazzi in Italian means the exact same thing and is inspired by the photographer in Federico Fellini's movie La Dolce Vita. The surname of this photographer in the movie is Paparazzo, which is the singular form of paparazzi in English. After this movie, the word has been used both in Italian and in English. In the US, a barista is usually someone preparing coffee behind a bar. But in Italy, the word barista is a little bit broader. Baristas in Italy also prepare alcoholic drinks because it's very common in a cafe in Italy to drink not just coffee but also alcoholic drinks. But while in the US, I discovered that you just use barista for someone preparing coffee while well, you use the word bartender to describe someone preparing alcoholic drinks. And this is a little bit strange to me, because why do you need even two words to describe this? Continuing with the coffee theme, I have the words espresso, cappuccino, latte, macchiato. This one makes more sense to me, because I mean, we are the best at making coffee, so it's normal that you copy us in our expressions. The word broccoli in English is spelled the same as the word broccoli in Italian. I had a look into this and I discovered that it was first used in Italy, of course. Romans used to grow broccoli in Sicily and in Italy even nowadays we really love broccoli. It got to the US because Italian immigrants took with them this crop. I was in New York one day and as usual I was sitting a pizza but then suddenly I saw that one pizza had the name zucchini on it and I was really unsure I mean why an English menu has an Italian word it was then that I learned that in American English the word zucchini is used as the Italian word zucchine after some research I found out that zucchine first gained popularity in Milan in the northern part of Italy during the 19th century and then from there slowly spread all around the world. I know that in the UK, in British English, they prefer to use the French word bourgette, while you Americans, you love us, so you prefer to use the Italian word zucchine, which becomes zucchini. Solo is used everywhere in English and maybe you don't even realize that it's an Italian word. When I first saw sentences such as solo traveling, solo album, riding solo, I was really confused. After looking it up, I understood that it's the same as the Italian word solo, which means alone. And that is a very common word in Italian, even if we use it with a slightly different meaning. Opera in English is directly borrowed from the Italian word opera. Italian opera had a major role inside the history of opera, so it's not really surprising to me that you use this word. The word opera in Italian means also a piece of work, which in turn comes from Latin. You might have heard the Latin sentence magnum opus, 
which means the masterpiece of an artist, the best work of this artist. This one is super interesting because we use a lot the word motto in Italian and while speaking English I never really knew which word I should use to describe it. Then when I finally realized that even in English you use the Italian word motto I was really happy because finally I could use the same word in both languages. Fiasco in English and fiasco in Italian mean the same thing. In Italy it's quite a common word and when I first heard reporters saying this word in English, for example while saying Italy did not qualify for the World Cup, it was a real fiasco. I was really confused because, I mean, they just used an Italian word, no? This word is really common in Italy to describe the flu, but maybe it's not as common in English, especially in American English, because I think this one is more a technical or scientific way to describe the flu in English. In Italy we also use this as the verb influenzare, which means to influence. In Rome, in 1743, there was a large outbreak of influenza that spread all over Europe, and this is when the word passed from Italian to English. This word is pronounced the same both in English and in Italian, and it's used to describe the end of an event. In Italian in general, it's used to describe the end of a play or a movie or a musical. That brings me to the end of this video, which I found super interesting to make and a little bit difficult also, to be honest. So if you found this interesting as well, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and take with you this Italian experience wherever you are. Thank you so much and ciao ciao! Broccoli! 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 Si dice broccoli! Broccoli!